What's up, church photographers? My name is Robbie Doland, and I am so excited that you're willing to use your gifts and talents to further what God is doing through His church. In this video, we're gonna talk about taking pictures in your church lobby, using only the light that's provided, either from windows, doors, or even the overhead lights. We do this to give people who have never been to the church a peek inside, and also show all the relational community and that when they come through those doors, they're gonna be welcomed. Here at Life Church, before you take any photos, you wanna be sure to check in at the host team desk and wear your op shirt. This will help people that you're taking pictures of to feel more comfortable knowing that you're on the team. You also wanna to try to focus on people that are serving at Life Church, anyone on the host team or in Life Kids. They have signed a photo release form and this allows us to use their photos for any application that we would like. So when you're taking pictures, you wanna be as minimal of a distraction as possible. I would recommend wearing as much black so that you can kind of blend into the shadows. You'll also want to be sure that when you're taking pictures, if you sense that there's someone that doesn't really want their photo taken, feel free to approach them and ask them if it's okay. If you see a moment happening and it looks a little intimate, you can also take that picture, but then go back later on and make sure that they were okay with the photo that you took. You can even show them on the back of the camera to make sure that they feel comfortable. When you're taking pictures at the church, you are representing the church. You wanna make sure that you make everyone feel comfortable and you respect everyone that you're pointing your camera at. It can be quite intimidating to take a huge lens and point it at someone. So feel free to walk up and talk to them. And remember, you never wanna get in the way of what God might be doing through their life. We wanna focus on relational community. What that means is showing people praying together, laughing together, having fun, or serving each other, or even just greeting each other. But that also means those, what we don't wanna show is people with their arms around each other, smiling straight at the camera. It won't really show what's happening at the church. The first thing you wanna do when walking into the lobby is assess the lighting. See where the windows are, where is the light coming from, how is the overhead light? Um, and then you wanna position yourself to be able to shoot away from the light. That way the light is falling on the face of the subject that you want to photograph. You don't want to shoot into the light as it'll be all blown out and your subject won't look as well as they could look in different lighting. One of the best places I have found to stand is next to the doors where most of the attenders are coming in and then focus on the greeter as they walk in and wait for the moment where they shake hands. You can get a lot of light on the person that's greeting them and some big smiles within that moment. And you're also not distracting the attender who hasn't seen you quite yet as they've walked through the doors and you are on the side of it. Here's an example of what it looks like to shoot into the light. You can see the background's all blown out and the light's shining through her hair and it's just not a very flattering photo. So what you wanna do in that case is you can just move over to the side and get much better lighting falling on your subject. So now that we got the photos from the lobby, I'm gonna walk you through culling them down, which just means picking which ones you wanna use and editing process. So this right here is bridge and I've already loaded them into here and then I'm just going to give you a, a bit of an idea of what I'm looking for and what I'm not looking for. And you can see here, you're seeing my out of focus images and just images that didn't really work. But what this is, is I'm getting ready and set up for the shot that I'm actually looking for. This image here almost would work, but the expression on his face really uh, just isn't telling any kind of a story. This one here would have been fun, but the guy's eyes are closed. This is gonna happen a lot. You're gonna take a ton of lobby photos and you're gonna get someone's back in the way or you're gonna get out of focus photos because people are, are walking or moving too fast. Uh, and so you just need to keep, keep at it, be patient and find the people that are constantly giving good smiles and saying hi to others. This guy is one of my favorite people. And you can see how he was saying hi to tons of people here. And then he started talking to this one man in particular. And we ended up getting this photo that I really like, which is this one right here. You can see that there's a little bit of branding from our church here with the shirt and the signage in the background. And then you have the attender talking with the volunteer and having a good time doing it. So this is actually one that we're gonna choose and edit. And I actually picked out a few other ones here that worked out well. Here's one of those other ones that weren't working and I ended up getting a good shot of her. And I actually got this one as well. So now we're gonna drag these into Lightroom. So now that we have these photos loaded into Lightroom, you can see here's the image that I wanted to go ahead and edit. And so the little trick there, just hitting the auto, seeing kind of what it does for me. 
and then taking that back down. You can see it brought down the highlights, slightly raised exposure, took up some of the shadows, brightened the whites, and barely reduced the blacks. Next thing I'm gonna do is just bring up a little bit of vibrance here. And this is according to how I have my camera set. So you might not need to do this. So then from here, I'm actually gonna bring in a little bit of this vignetting. And when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. As soon as I figured out how to use vignette, I used to overuse it. And so now I really won't go past seven. But you can see it barely giving in just a little more focus into the subject there. So we'll put that there. And then our church has a lot of red. So I'm actually gonna take that and boost the red that's in his shirt. And make it just slightly brighter. There we go. So it's really just the small things. The other thing is I, I feel like there's a lot of focus on the lower third of this image. So what I'm gonna do to fix that is use this tool here, which is the gradient tool on darken. And I'll pull it in and you can see it was up top. So now I'm gonna switch it down to the bottom. I'm gonna pull it out so to make that fade real go. There we go. And now you can see the area that that's affecting. And then within there, I can move things. I can make it even darker or I can reduce the highlights. So now, if I go to the before and after, there's the image that I took straight out of camera, and then there's our edited image that's ready to be posted on social media. If you happen to be shooting at nighttime or in a building that doesn't have any natural light, you're gonna to wanna to try to bounce your flash. And that means pointing up to something like the ceiling or a wall behind you, or even off to the side if there's a wall beside you. You do wanna look at the color of whatever you're bouncing it off of as that will transfer over to your subject. One of the best things to do is look for anything that's white or maybe even skin tone. Then you'll bounce the light, let that light fall onto the subject, you'll get a much better looking image without harsh shadows. So here's the image that we actually took without a flash. And I'll show you the before and after. I went ahead and just gave it a slight little edit. And now here is the image we took with flash. There's the unedited and there's the edited. And you can see that the subject is lit much better when we use the flash bouncing off the ceiling than when we use no flash. In fact, there's even less grain in the one with flash versus the one without. As a general rule, I try not to use the flash as much as possible, but there's always gonna be a situation where you're gonna need more light. And it's the same thing with when you're raising the ISO. It's something that you have to do to capture the moment. The last thing I wanna talk about on the editing side of things was how to remove something from one of the photos. One of the things that we have on all of our volunteers is a badge with a name. And we wanna make sure that we protect those people and that we're not posting out to tons of people of the full name of any individual that we take a picture of. So this is how you do that. So this is the image we're gonna use here. This is actually one of our staff members and he's ministering at our youth event that we have on Wednesday nights. And so here's his full name and I'm just gonna use this tool right here, which is the brush. And it has a clone capability as well as heel. And we're gonna use the heel brush. So right here, I'm gonna take my brush a little bit slower and I'm just gonna paint over his name right there. And then we'll take this move it to this little section here, and you can see that we've already moved quite a bit of it away. And so then you can see right here, we have just a little bit left, so we can make our brush pretty small there and repaint in this area and eliminate any of those other really small areas. And then pull it back up here into the white. And now we have a nice clean, no name on the name badge. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I wanna let you know here at the end that you might not get to see all the places that your photos are used and all the people that they impact, but know that you are doing great things for the kingdom of God. And remember, you're not just taking pictures, you're capturing life change as it happens.